Hello guys, welcome back to 1878 Blues. Everton have just been beaten 2-0 by Tottenham Hotspur. I'm going to be honest, we were fucking shite. Absolutely shite going forward. If these are the play, I, I, I don't want to... I just, I'm a sore loser and that's what it is. But like, for the long term plan, Damari Gray isn't good enough. McNeil, average. If you don't give... If you don't give McNeil a time of day, you can mark him out the game easily. You just need to be tight with him, and that's it. He does nothing. He literally offers nothing. Um, Onana. I'm trying to get in my head with Onana of all this massive praise he's been getting, and it seems to be in the games that I don't watch. And I've watched him twice now, and I don't know exactly what he does. He put a fair few good tackles in. There was one where Tottenham was breaking away, and it was so it was shortly after the Ben Cantor uh, foul. Well, it wasn't really a foul, but and yeah, the ball was chasing away, and Onana picked it off him. A good challenge, really good challenge. But that's all he seems to do. Uh, all he seems to do. Um, there's nothing really there. At the moment, for what I'm seeing, I don't want to overhype about him, and I don't think a lot of us should be. Um, obviously, I'm getting near that he's only 21, um, and he's just joined this league. But yeah, I just don't like the way some of our fans at times really overhype a player. Like he's got potential, but he hasn't got it yet. And I, I, you can support the players all you want, but I just don't want us thinking that some of these players are better than what they are showing. Um, just a shit game as well absolute shit game and very frustratingly not really a nil nil all over it because I think obviously Tottenham was better than us but the game really for me changed when Richarlison went off um, but yeah the first half was Spurs had one shot on target and let's just keep it real with that you know Defensively, we were sound. We kept tight to their attackers and they couldn't really do much. They was on the ball a lot. They had a lot of possession, passing around, looking all pretty and whatnot. Did nothing, really. We had the two best chances of the game. and You just you might as well put a bet on at half-time and just go, we'll get beaten now. Because there is so many times I've seen Everton over the years where we've had massive chances in games like this where... It's at a top four side away from home or just against a big side or a big team who we don't seem to beat. And we have massive chances. And I don't fucking want to hear these excuses of the ball bobbling up. Your professional footballer should be smashing that back of the net. The amount of times you probably see them and the amount of, like, in training videos and the amount of time you know, we see it and... They think they're all mad scoring a great goal, whatever, top corner. Ooh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't do it on the pitch. And, like, the two chances there when we caught Tottenham out, I'll say one's kind of a mistake. We've caught on a loose ball. We should have put them away. I mean, the, the most annoying thing with the Damari Gray one was he did, he did all the hard work, you know, muscled out the player, carried the ball, fake to stop and then carried on running um, got to the right hand side of the goal and could have squared it to Mope potentially it wasn't fully on for Mope but I think if he had a bit of class about the Marty Gray and a bit of awareness and whatnot and composure he would have passed that to, to Mope um, or found him at least but he didn't, and he blazed it over the bar. I, I I missed that chance because I was in a I was in work, so I missed the first twenty minutes. But I just seen that, and I was like, oh my god, fuck me! Like the Marty Gray is so frustrating as a player. Like technically on the ball, technically on the ball, right? there's a big difference between your awareness around you and what you do with the pass and who you do, who you give it to and whatnot. For me, it's piss poor absolutely piss poor he always seems to not find his man or you know there could be a player running behind and they probably shout to them obviously and he just never seems to pick them out um that's, he's fucking shocking at that to be honest he just keeps the ball too long too many times as well and just ends up losing or overdoing it 
Um, and there's no surprise that he's missed that. Um, and yeah, but then we had another chance and the ball breaks, uh, the ball comes loose and, and on and nicks it and, you know, looks brilliant flying through like the big beast he is and he just blazes over the bar and you're like, wait, 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 where's the composure, guys? Like, there was a goal the other day, I, I think I, uh, I saw, um, I can't remember who scored it, but they basically just passed it into the net. Um, I can't remember what game it was. He said, but I was going to smash it in before just co keep your composure and just make sure you get it on target and roll it in. I feel like them chances were like that. Keep your composure. The more great the angle stones get a bit tight, but at least get it on target. Oh, no, no it was a bigger chance for me. Um, fucking frustrating. I can't remember that goal. It's going to piss me off now. Whoever said it in the interview afterwards, he said, just got to keep your composure and slot it over. As long as you get on target, um, make the keeper work and it'll go in. That's going to burn me a bit. So I can't remember who scored that and what game. But yeah, just awful. Absolutely awful. And then you come into the second half and you're thinking to yourself, there's absolutely no chance here. Um, just after seeing them two big misses, there's no chance we're going to get more. I think Tottenham are going to be a bit more aware of that now. I think Conte would have had a big go at them at half time. And listen, it was the same for the first five minutes. There's nothing really much going on. Um, <clears throat> and so Spurs keeping possession again. And Richardson gets injured. Now, unfortunately for us, damage was done when he went off. Um, they looked a lot more composed and compact. Uh, they matched us a lot more midfield with bringing Basuma on. Um, and they just looked a better team, uh, defensively more solid. Um, we just couldn't get an inch to their box. We couldn't get anywhere near their box. Um, so frustrating. Really frustrating. And, uh, yeah, Tottenham just have a few efforts on goal. Um, there, was a, there was a brilliant volley. By Kane, can't stand him, you know. Like for England, yeah, fine. I just can't stand him. Like, you know, one of them people just pissing off. Like, he just does my head in Harry Kane. He just thinks he's sick. Like, he's so arrogant the way I, I, oh, God forbid. I can't stand, I can't stand the Spurs in general. Um, I've never had any time wanting them to beat someone, they don't beat them, or yeah, there's so many things in the past where Spurs have let me down, and uh, I just can't stand them. Um, yeah, a few more efforts on goal. Um, Pickford making some decent saves. Got blocks by Tarkovsky, who's like the number one blocker in the uh, the Premier League. Um, I've just nothing really looked like. You'd think there's going to be a piece of magic from Son or something to like break the deadlock, or just Kane just getting a sniff by an, by one of our players' faults. And you'd think just one nil, one nil all over this, and a shot comes in. I can't exactly remember who hit it. Could have been Hoiberg, Benkins, or uh, yeah, I can't, I can't think who it was. Might have been Doherty. Um, the ball gets flashed at him. To me, I think it was Doherty. I think he should have saved it. To me, he should have. He does this quite a lot on keepers, and I don't know if it's a massive issue for keepers with the gloves or whatever it is they can't seem to just keep hold of the ball there's a lot of shots I see in the Premier League where sometimes you know, most of the time there's no players around them and you know the shot comes in and they don't seem to get a hold of it it's yeah it's a well drilled shot but straight at them they can't seem to just keep hold of it and it just it just it, it doesn't parry it just doesn't do enough with the save and um the ball slowly just comes out in front of him and he knew he's he knows he's fucked up and there's four players around him which makes this more fucking annoying. And Harry Kane to me, after watching it a few times, I was like Stonewall penalty and it, it is in a sense it's clever kind of play from a striker point of view and you know if you feel a touch you go down but for me he just leans into Pickford and it does me I didn't know he, he leans in and 
Pickford's gone for the attempt as well, which just you're just not gonna get away with. Um, and Pickford putting his face on the ground as well just doesn't help. I mean, in football, and I know there's VAR out there, but in football, don't just make it obvious that you fucked up. You know what I mean? There's players who argue every single foul and go, I didn't touch him, didn't do this, do that. You see the replay and you're like, what are you on about? He clearly fouled him. And I think Pickford could have possibly done that then, but like I said, there's VAR and if you see a slight touch on Kane, I just think it's a fucking, like, I know it's happened to us, and if it happened, you know, if it happened to us, sorry, I love the call for it, but it's annoying where players just, it's clear cut dive, like they've dived, they've theatrically dived to win something. And I, football has had that over the years, but I just feel like the whole of football and VAR and everything, it's killing the game. And like, there's fouls every five seconds now because a player goes, ah, oh, like that, and roll around and and just make the most of everything and it's clearly obvious and it's so annoying to just witness this all the time the, the, the game's so stop and start now it's becoming like rugby honestly um, but yeah penalty it is fucking annoyed because I thought we didn't I didn't feel too threatened with Spurs obviously like I said in the back of your mind I'm like they only need one chance really it's one of them tight games where I've just finished one nil and we've offered absolutely nothing in the second half and Spares wasn't that great to me. I think we just gave them too much respect. Um, but that's probably a lack of ability of us defending their counter-attacks, which is obviously a worry, like I said, in the match preview with Tarkovsky and Cody. And now, you know, we have Michalenko in the back, so it's like a five in the back with McNeil on the left and Coleman on the right. And I think the whole of the back line here is fucking slow. Honestly, you could give them all walking sticks or something, like they are that slow. Um, so maybe that was the, the four processes that we can't be a bit braver going forward because if we do end up getting a counter attack against us we've got no one to recover obviously you've got probably the, um, you know you do have the chance of Awobi catching up Onana Gay um, but they could they're most likely going to be higher up the pitch if we're obviously attacking so yeah as as normal, Kane dispatches it. Um, Pickford, you know, went the right way, but the power just beats him. Um, I th for the rest of the game, it was just fucking easy for Spurs. We just didn't offer anything. We brought down Dominic Cavalier and on Mopey did absolutely fuck all, but because he, he really didn't get any support to be honest at all. Um, James Garner comes on as well. Um, there was a chance for James Garner whips in the box and on it. You know, could have got something from it, but um, Eric Dyer, really good defending and communicated with Lloris, and he caught the ball, and yeah, play goes on, and yeah, we just offered absolutely nothing in the second half, and out of nowhere, Kane miscontrols the ball, and Michalenko, I mean, Kane is slow, Kane is like, horrendously slow, and he still beats Michalenko, and I thought Mil Michalenko was shite. I just thought he was shite, Michalenko. His passing, everything was just way off. Um, couldn't be Kane to the ball. Kane holds it, passes it to Ben, ben Cantor. And you, all of a sudden, I could just see Hoiberg in the middle on his own. I was going, where the fuck is the defence? Where's everyone gone? Uh, players get you dragged up to Ben Cantor, creates even more of a space, and then... You know, fortunately in my head at the time, I thought, well, there's a Wobi there, but Wobi will catch up to Hoiberg. He won't, you know, Hoiberg won't do anything from there. Hoiberg's relying to come fly it, you know, you know, ball over the top, and he's just running through and, you know, passes it into the net, or it's a long range effort from Hoiberg. And I just thought, he'll get the ball, he won't do anything with it. He picks up the ball, like he's allowed to turn, but Wobi's trying to block the shot, and he just places it in the top corner. Fire deflection off a of Wobie and 2 0, and that's it. I mean, I might as well have just gone to the gym, to be honest. My gym shut to eat. Could have done about a 40 minute workout if I wanted to. At that point, I could have just gone, fuck this. There's, there's literally no point watching this. Um, it's done and dusted. We have offered absolutely nothing in the second half. <laughs> um, it's just like a trading game. It's, just, it's just like a trading match or something, or a drill where you just like, you have to defend against this side with dead attacks 
like a defensive training match or something. I don't fucking know. It was just boring. It was awful. Um, it really worries me. Oh, attacking players just against the big sides as well. Now we've we, I'll say last season, the past few seasons, we normally come up quite well against these bigger sides, better sides than us, um, or the top four, whatever you want to say, top six. We don't do too bad. We obviously pick up losses in the season, but we tend to pick up something. And we now we faced what we faced Chelsea, Liverpool, United and Tottenham and we've picked up one point and we scored one goal I mean it's not good isn't it? it's not good um, it's all well and good defending like you did being organised making it hard to beat if you have no one up front you just how many times are you going to let a team come at you you know what I mean it was just shit. I thought Tottenham was crap Really gonna be honest, and Bev will go on. Who's good? They play well. Everton didn't have a chance. Um, Everton didn't have a chance, and yeah, they controlled and dominated the game. We were just shite. I don't think, like I said, I don't think Tottenham, Tottenham was much better, and I think Conte has changed the way they are in terms of being ruthless um, <clears throat> at times and games in the season. In this game, they could have been ruthless. It was one of them, you know, them games we offered nothing. <clears throat> but, you know, he's a bit more defensive minded, knowing that he's got a lot of fixtures in the season. He does, doesn't want to tire his players out. And yeah, basically just ran off the rest of the match and that was it. Um, but anyway, where do we go from here? Fuck knows. But we just got to keep our heads up. Two losses in a row now. Um, and yeah, doesn't feel good. Anyway, I will uh, go um, like, com comment, subscribe, try and get this to 10 likes. Um, you'll probably get more than that just because you lost. Um, but yeah, I'll see you about.